That's not possible. Start thinking outside the box. Are you a critical thinker? Then try these impossible riddles and see if you can really think outside the box. Before we begin the mind puzzles, don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more of our videos for a healthy mind, body, and soul. Keep track of your score and give yourself one point for each correct answer. Watch until the end to find out which type of critical thinker you are. Let's get on with our riddles. Number one, three brothers. One snowy night, Mr. Wilson was in his house sitting by a fire. All of a sudden, a snowball came crashing through his window, breaking it. Mr. Wilson got up and looked out the window, just in time to see three neighborhood kids who were brothers run around a corner. Their names were John Crimson, Mark Crimson, and Paul Crimson. The next day, he got a note on the door that read, which of the three brothers should Mr. Wilson question about the incident? Mark Crimson. The note on the door reads, Question Mark Crimson. He broke the window. Number two, the kidnapping. Mr. Bill Richmond, a very wealthy businessman, was kidnapped and killed. At the crime scene, a note was found written by Mr. Richmond. It read, 1st of January, 4th of October, 5th of March, 3rd of June. The kidnapper's name was hidden in the note. The following people were the suspects. Jack Richmond, the son and heir of the property. June Richmond, the wife of Mr. Richmond, and John Jacobson, and an employee of Mr. Richmond. Can you tell who the killer was? You have to read the note carefully. First of January means the first letter of January, which is J. The same for 4th of October, 5th of March, 3rd of June. It spells out J-O-H-N, John. It was John Jacobson. Number three, main suspect. A crime was committed at Cactus Road. Jeremy, who was shot in the stomach, was the main suspect. When the detective questioned him, this is what Jeremy had to say. I was walking around Cactus Road when suddenly a man from the back shot me. I ran as fast as I could to save my life. The detective stopped Jeremy and asked the police to arrest him. Why? If he was shot from the back, then why did he get injured in the stomach? Jeremy was lying. Number four, shooting in the shack. Detective Marlowe was jogging near the beach at 4.30 a.m when he hears someone shouting by the shack. No, Michael, please don't shoot me. Then he hears a gunshot. Marlow rushes to the shack where he finds a woman lying dead on the ground. A gun is in close proximity to a doctor, a lawyer, and a teacher. Marlow immediately knew that the lawyer committed the crime. How? The lawyer was the only man. Michael was the name of the killer. Number five, man in the hotel. Jane was sitting in her hotel room when she heard a knock on her door. She opened the door and found that a man was standing outside. The man said, oh, I am really sorry. I thought this was my room. He then walked through the corridor to the elevator. Jane called the hotel security and asked them to apprehend the man. What made Jane suspicious of the man?
Jane was suspicious of the man because if he thought the room was his, he would have tried his key first. Number six, thief on the ship. A Japanese ship was en route to a mission in foreign seas. The captain was tired and decided to take a bath. He removed his diamond ring and Rolex and set them on his table. After taking a bath, he returned to find that his ring and watch were stolen. He called five members of the crew whom he suspected were guilty and asked them what they were doing during the last 15 minutes. George the cook said, I was in the freezer getting meat for cooking. Adam the chief engineer said, I was working on the generator's engine. Kevin the third mate said, I was on the mast, correcting the flag which was upside down. Bruce, the radio officer, said, I was trying to make contact with the company to inform them of our position. Chris, the navigation officer, said, I am on night watch, so I was sleeping in my cabin. After hearing them, the captain knew who the thief was. Who was it? It was Kevin. He was lying when he said he had to correct the flag. The Japanese flag looks the same upside down. Number seven, the suicide. A dead body is found outside a multi-story, multinational company. The case is reported and a homicide detective is called to investigate. He looks at the body and then towards the building. From the position of the body, it is evident that the victim committed suicide. He goes to the first floor of the building and then walks in the direction of the dead body. He opens the window and tosses out a coin in the air. He goes to the second floor and repeats the process. He keeps doing this until he has done it on all of the floors. Then he returns to the police officers and tells them that it is a murder. How did he conclude this? He knew it was a murder after noticing that all the windows in the direction of the body on all the floors were closed. If the man had committed suicide, one window should have been left open. Number eight, murder in the school. It's the first day of school and a young girl was found murdered. Police suspect four male teachers and ask them what they were doing at 8 o'clock in the morning. Matt replies, I was reading the newspaper. Daniel replies, I was checking chemistry papers. Howard replies, I was at home, hurrying to prepare for school because I woke up late. And Paul replies, I was dropping my wife off at her office. Who was the killer? It was Daniel. There are no papers to check on the first day of school. Number 9. Elevator Man A man who lives on the 10th floor takes the elevator down every morning to go to work. If he comes back on a rainy day, he uses the elevator and goes to his floor directly. Otherwise, he goes to the seventh floor using the elevator and walks three flights of stairs to his apartment. Can you explain why? The man is short. He can't reach the upper elevator buttons, but can push them with his umbrella, which he uses on rainy days. Number 10, the couple's vacation. A newlywed couple went on a hiking trip outside the country. After two days, only the husband returned home from the vacation and said that his wife fell off of a cliff and did not survive. The next day, the police arrest him. The husband asked why. The police answered, your travel agent called. You murdered your wife. How do you think the travel agent knew about the murder? Thank mm -hmm. you.
The travel agent informed the police that the husband bought two tickets for departure, but only a single return ticket. It means that the husband was sure he would be returning alone. Number 11. Friendly Visit Frank was found dead in his bedroom by his friend Andrew. Andrew recounts his discovery of the dead body to Detective Williams. I was walking by Frank's house when I thought I would just pop in for a visit. I noticed his study light was on, so I decided to have a peek. There was frost on the window, so I had to wipe it clean to see if Frank was in there. That's when I saw his body, so I kicked the front door open and confirmed my suspicions of foul play. I then called the police immediately. After hearing this, Detective Williams immediately asked the police to arrest Andrew. Why? Andrew was lying. Frost forms on the inside of the windows, not outside, so he could not have wiped it off to discover Frank's body. Number 12. The Cottage A wealthy man was living alone in a small cottage. Being partially handicapped, he had everything delivered to him. The mailman was delivering a letter on a Thursday when he noticed that the front door was ajar. Through the opening, he could see the man's body lying in a pool of dried blood. When the police arrived, they surveyed the scene. On the porch were two bottles of warm milk, Monday's newspaper, flyers, and unopened mail. The police suspect it is foul play. Who do they suspect and why? The police suspects the newspaper delivery man. The absence of Tuesday's and Wednesday's newspaper indicates that the delivery man knew there was no one there to read it. Number 13. The Poor and the Rich A man is sitting in a bar feeling rather poor. He sees the man next to him pull out a wad of $100 bills from his wallet. He turns to the rich man and says to him, I have an amazing talent. I know almost every song that has ever existed. The rich man laughs. The poor man then says, I am willing to bet you all the money you have in your wallet that I can sing using a genuine song with a lady's name of your choice in it. The rich man laughs again and says, Okay, how about my daughter's name, Annabella Armstrong Miller? The rich man goes home poor. The poor man goes home rich. What song did he sing? The song was Happy Birthday. Now let's see how you did. If you got zero to four points, you are a beginning critical thinker. You're still a long way from becoming a riddle master, but keep working on your logic skills by watching more of Sawaro's fun riddles. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you got five to seven points, you are a practicing critical thinker. Keep practicing by solving more puzzles or keep watching more videos on impossible riddles. If you got eight to 10 points, you are an advanced critical thinker and a real problem solver. Just pay attention to the details a little bit more and you'll become a master thinker real soon. If you got 11 to 13 points, congratulations! You are a master critical thinker. Impossibility is not in your vocabulary and you can really think outside the box. Did you have fun with these riddles? What type of thinker are you? Comment down below. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Click the notification bell or we'll find all your $100 bills. Check out our other videos. Brain teasers for a healthy mind, keep your mind sharp. Life is on the line. 
solve ten riddles to save yourself.